Hey everybody, welcome to the Dungeon Cast. I'm Will. And I am Brian. This is the podcast where we talk about everything Dungeons and Dragons, from ascetic ASMR to ambitious artificers. And today, we're talking about lycanthropes. So lycanthropes, Brian, or werewolves, but there's more than just werewolves when it comes to lycanthropes. What do you know about lycanthropes? I know <clears throat> that I would hate to see one in the streets, because yeah, fuck, oh, that. Yeah, fuck that. Absolutely fuck, fuck that. that. Which do you prefer, uh, vampires or werewolves? Um, like to be or to encounter or what, in what context? I mean, just generally speaking, like in pop culture, I probably prefer the vampire because they seem a little more, um, like intellectual. Yeah. They're definitely more culture, more refined. Usually the werewolves are depicted as being more feral. Yeah. And it's not as, it's not as mysterious. It's like we have two monster movies, but one of them is like. A villain, and the other one yeah. is just like this beast, right? Like feral, right? Yeah, that, that's actually that's a uncontrolled, good point. unrefined. Yeah. I like the ones um, in control of their power, yes. theoretically. Well, yeah. like in in as much of a way as they can be, without right. like they are a vampire. So, it, like sometimes they were a person. Okay, and um, oh, that's unfortunate. It's okay. <laughs> um, by notes. Yeah, I know my note for for our listeners who can't see my notes just fell to the ground. So cool. I'm I'm ad libbing it. It's all good. I, I just use those for reference anyways. Um, so lycanthropes in... Okay, so lycanthropes in pop culture are almost exclusively, for the most part, werewolves. Right. In D&D, it's not like that. Although werewolves probably be the most common. But there's others. In the Monster Manual, there's like six others. Well, hit me with that werewolf. Webster shit. Like, what's lycanthrope versus werewolf? Like, where's the difference? Okay, well, it's kind of funny. Okay, I'm glad you brought that up. Because lycanthrope in D&D is just a catch-all for, like, those inflicted with the curse that kind of infuses you with... Like you, you the evil version of Wild Shape. Yeah, that's actually yeah the, the evil version of Wild Shape. Um, but what's funny about the word lycanthrope is it literally translate to translates to wolf person. Okay, so sure. it just means werewolf, but we're using it to mean a lot more things in D and D. Well, I mean, like if you're going to be literal, like a wolf person could be like a person that resembles a wolf, like a sure. like a humanoid in a yeah. way. But what I mean to say is, in Dungeons and Dragons, there are were rats, there are were bears, there are were boars, there are were tigers. Like, and honestly, in previous editions, there was were dolphins and were sharks and were ravens. <laughs> and I think the uh, the Curse of Strahd book has the were ravens in it, which is really cool. You live in a beach town, um, but it's, it's Dungeons it's and Dragons. The night of the full moon. Oh gosh! Attack of the Were Dolphins. <laughs> oh, I was oh, gonna say fuck. Attack of the Were Shark. <laughs> Attack of the Were Shark. They're, te- they're teaming up. Oh no! Oh, no. They're working in tandem. They cast um, Tornado. Oh <laughs> no! Now we got a sci-fi movie, a really <laughs> shitty one. Save me, Terry. Um, okay, so uh, in D and D, if there's an animal, there's a Were version of it. So, um, in in pop culture today, I think. Much like zombies, which we think that was last episode, uh, pop culture likes to put a scientific twist on things, and like, yeah. so they they view this werewolf thing as a genetic yeah. disease. Like you've been, you've been injected with a serum by some mad doctor, right? Exactly. Um, again, in D and D, it's not like that because D and D doesn't have science. D&D yeah, there's no magic. like infection. Like you don't get scratched by a were creature and then become the were creature in like a week or whatever when you can't stave off the like infection or whatever it is. Well, no, but. In D&D, uh, lycanthropy is considered to be a curse. For sure. And the way it's spread is by a bite or a claw. It's usually so a bite. So it is like that. It is, but case. it's not genetic. It's not like biological. It's, it's just, like magic. It's magical. Okay. It's a curse. And like it is it is considered a curse for the most part, but it can be considered a blessing. Because here's the thing. Lycanthropy in D&D has really mucky origins that like no one really knows how lycanthropes came into the world. Okay. But like there's two kind of origin stories. So on one hand, <clears throat> we'll, we'll go with the curse origin story. In Forgotten Realms, there is a uh, evil deity named Malar, who is the Lord of Beasts. For sure. He's kind of like the dark... Um, side of nature if you will he's all about like being predatorial and whatnot and it it. said that he cursed a group of barbarians with lycanthropy and it kind of fits his mo because he's all about spreading evil lycan lycanthropy he's like he really wants that that bestial nature to come out of everyone that's that's malar's (laughs) deal okay but on the other hand there's fetish but all right yeah i know right so on the other hand though there's a different origin story where the goddess saloon or in fourth edition her name would be sahanin uh, Sahanin Moonbow. She's the goddess of the moon, and she blessed a certain group of people with lycanthropy to help them survive better in the wild. For sure. Okay. And since she's the goddess of the moon, and the moon holds sways over lycanthropes, that kind of makes sense, too. Um, my, my concept is that I think both versions are simultaneously true. Um, I don't know why Malar's version would also be 
uh, affected by the moon, but it just is because there are lawful, there are good lycanthropes and there are bad lycanthropes. And so Loon, um, one of her main missions is she's very against evil like lycan- like anthropy and she wants it wiped off the face of the earth for sure <laughs> it's given them ba- uh, everybody a bad name yeah and that's the thing uh like anthropy in D D um can change your alignment can change who you are um where wolves for example <clears throat> tend to be inherently chaotic evil it's okay. just an evil aligned lycanthropy where bears on the other hand are um I think lawful good. They might be neutral good or chaotic good, but they're good, generally okay. speaking. Okay. Um, so, I think bears are good too. And yeah, bears are good. So <laughs> I could see like, well, maybe Saloon made the were tigers and the were bears and maybe even the were rats, but Millar created like the were boars and the were wolves. And like maybe Ooh, there's a, a divide like that. That's cool. Yeah, the were boars are, are pretty cool. So. So yeah, those are those are kind of like the monk, the mucked up like origins of like vanilla D and D when it comes to to werewolves or lycanthropy in general. Okay, what's that? What's that movie? Underworld. I love Underworld. Underworld yeah. is cool. They're they're yeah. um their werewolves are like super like it's like a faction. Yeah, yeah, it's you know that classic werewolves versus vampires kind of deal, which is cool. Yeah. I like that. It's just it's interesting how that came about because they're like super independent folklore, but like I mean they do have uh, a lot of like. The same origin places in European folk. Yeah, like, isn't European. there like food supply the same or whatever? <laughs> I like mean, people. Yeah, as so they're, to, they're like vying for yeah. territory when it gets like things get like out of hand. There's too many of both. Yeah, you know? well, and and it, I, it for some reason it works really well. Um, I, I think it it's just good. it just I, it's like Batman and the Joker. Like on paper, that doesn't sound right, but like Batman and the Joker are the perfect dichotomy for some reason. Like why a bat and a clown are like the perfect yin yang? They just are. Same <laughs> with werewolves and vampires. So, in lycanthropy, there are two ways to spread it. The first wave is what we talked about, where uh, if you're bitten Bites by a scratches. lycanthrope, yeah, you, specifically biting. It's usually specifically biting. Okay. Um, the other way is it can be hereditary. If a werewolf has a child, it's a high chance that the child will be uh, the will have the same curse. Isn't that like how Harry Potter was kind of throwing it out, like um, Remus Lupin? Um, was was Remus born with it? No, I think he might have been. He he, he, he was got bit, bitten. but th- isn't yeah. his son spoilers? Isn't his son or uh, is is his son in some sort of canon thing that I don't know about? Yeah, it's at the very well. This is super Harry Potter spoilers, uh, well, so watch yeah, out. Do, but like at the very kid, end, their yeah. boy is like, yeah, but I don't think they talk about like and in, in the kid, do they? Oh, well, it's I vague, seriously don't remember that. That's vaguely familiar to me, but maybe not. I yeah, don't know. I, that's very fan fictiony. I kind of like the idea, but like I don't know. I have a feeling I'm gonna have to look it up after the podcast, but yeah. whatever. Okay, so hit me with that Harry Potter, <laughs> Brian. You suck. So you can <laughs> be born a lycanthrope if your if your parents, one of them, was makes uh, sense. There is a slight well, difference. Well, actually, no. If it's okay, you're passing on magic because we we said it's not genetic. Well, l- remember we've said this in many podcasts before. Babies are in high danger in D and D. Like, don't be born in a crazy storm. Don't be born near a forest that has face stuff. Like, bad things happen to babies in D and D for sure, including. Passing on of lycanthropy curses. So there it is. Cool. Um, there is some slight differences in in the general nature or of eggs. one born a werewolf and one turned into a werewolf. One turned into a werewolf usually has this inner conflict of being like transformed, not not just like physically, but like their soul, if you will, uh, their alignment change. Okay. And like uh, someone who's bitten can either embrace their lycanthropy curse or resist it. If they embrace it, they give into it completely. They will gain a certain amount of control over it, but their alignment will change. So if they were bitten by a werewolf and they embrace it, according to vanilla lore, they then turn chaotic evil. Okay. They give into their feral senses. They can trans- transform at will. Also, the moon will do it for them against their will when that happens. So there's but no like, like daytime nighttime rule. No, there's no daytime nighttime rule. Got it. Um, and and we'll get a little bit more about like how the transformation works in a bit. Uh, while someone who's born a lycanthrope usually can just inherently control it, they're a little less feral. I think there's probably going to be an inclination to still fall into the alignment of chaotic evil or whatever it is that their were race falls under. But I think they're they're more. Um, likely to just be people with a choice. Okay, got which, it. Which I think, for me, that's a big deal. Like, I'm never too big of a fan of something changing you against your will, except for, like, super powerful shit, like the abyss. Like, okay. that's going to corrupt you. But, like, that's kind of a slow thing over time. It's not like... And if you're a cultist, you're, like, vo- you're volunteering, and then, like, the... the What is it? The influence they, that these, right. like, 
creatures have over you will eventually like turn you right but it's kind of still of will like you're signing up for this yeah yeah but on the other hand like i do get the idea that no you don't get a choice because that's part of the horror aspect of it it's like a body horror thing which is what werewolf it's like it's like a uh, um, a tragedy (laughs) or like a calamity of some kind on your on your person yeah so um for evil lycanthropes like they seem to insatiably crave humanoid flesh right like they're not only evil they're driven to really do evil things they're not just animals like animals don't normally hunt humans unless they're really hungry and it's a it's a happenstance that humans in the area. Now these things go looking for people, right? And usually, evil lycanthropes are tr- well, depending on what they are. Some lycanthropes are more willing to spread the curse than others. Like the boar, werebores, they spread it indiscriminately. That's what they they're spread, about. Spread, spread, spread. Okay. Uh, I think werewolves, for the most part, same deal. Um, where tigers, on the other hand, almost never spread it, except for maybe as like a a parental thing. Like I'm going to take you under my wing. Okay, and spread sure. My, my tiger curse. Like to it's you. time for uh, um, for me to have like an, an apprentice. I'm getting a little old, and <laughs> yeah. I, you know, you know, you get that. Uh, <laughs> there can you only want that be legacy. one. <laughs> and yeah, there can only be one, and that's the thing because tigers are highly territorial, predatorial animals, and that's how their were versions are. They don't want more competition. Right. Okay. Um, were bears, it's more along the lines of they don't like to spread it because they consider it a burden. All right. Um, they are the probably the most good of all the the were creatures, and uh, they tend to live very isolated lives. And that's kind of like the story of all werewolves is um, the good ones tend to go full iso. They're just completely isolated. They try and stay away from people because even the good ones like bears, like they still have those feral urges. Yeah, and, they're gonna go live like a bear, more of a bear life, like yeah. off the grid. Yeah, absolutely. And like they're also like. You know, like even a bear that is like your friend, it's still a fucking bear. Exactly. It might have some instinctual thing to attack you that it can't keep in check at all times. You might roll up and scare it. Exactly. It might be like freaking out about something else and kill you. Yeah. So the werebears try and stay away from people for the most part. And if they know other werebears, they might clan about a little bit. But for the most part, they're solitary creatures. So how long are these creatures spending in like each form? Like, uh, like I know. Okay, let's talk about the Yeah, you said the full moon is like one thing. The full moon will, will trigger it. Okay. Yeah, I think I think there's versions of werewolves that can resist that trigger later on when they uh, when they embrace their stuff. Okay. But if they're resisting it, they can resist it and it's going to like take a toll on them over time. Yeah, like but, it'll wear you down mentally. Yeah. And every full moon, like you're transforming. There's no choice. Yeah. But so as long like, as you resist it, you maintain your humanity. Okay. And like your personality. Cool. Uh, but let's talk about the form. So all werewolves have three forms. They have their human form. They have their full animal form, and that's kind kind of something different about D and D. You don't usually see in a lot of pop culture is like a werewolf can turn into a fucking wolf. I was gonna ask that. Yeah. So it's it it goes quadruped, full on, and like runs around. A hybrid version is the third version. That's right, like so the that, werewolf, and that's like a um like a I always picture like a barrel chested, wide shouldered, like yeah. on its hind legs. Yep. you know exactly big cl- front claws. Yeah, and the, stuff. the classic looking werewolf. Yeah. yeah, that's the hybrid version. Michael Jackson thriller style. There we go. Yeah. I like that. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, so that they can transform into wolves. They can communicate with wolves. Usually, uh, a were, uh, usually a lycanthrope will have some sort of sway or communication with the creature that they can transform into. Okay. Um, obviously they're going to be more beefed up versions. So like, I. I wouldn't use just a normal wolf stat block for a werewolf in wolf form. Is there a is there a stat block for the werewolf? I don't think there is. So what what where but, are you where are you placing it like CR rating? So the CR rating, okay. Well, there are well, yes, there's stat blocks for the werewolf, but like there's, I'm trying to remember if off the top of my head. I think in the stat block it has built in attacks for each form. Oh, okay, okay. So I think I think you got that going for you. So uh, like a werewolf is going to maintain the same HP and AC as a werewolf even in wolf form. Okay, cool. It's not going to take the wolf stat block. All right, of a sudden, right, which yeah. might probably, I would imagine, is weaker. Yeah, oh yeah, a lot weaker. I think a wolf is like a quarter CR rating, while a werewolf is like five. Oh, so wow. Much okay, more powerful, yeah. yeah. Sure. And then um, as like a human, you have like the punch attack? Yeah, I think a <laughs> spear. Scratch? It just has a spear attack in there. I'm like, okay. So like, <laughs> this is the way, like, if I remember correctly, it's, the stat block is like, it's it's got all like the HP and all the skills and all that, but then for attacks, it's like got spear, humanoid form only, claws and bite, uh, hybrid or wolf form only for okay, both of those. For and sure. so the, the those attacks remain the same. So um, while in wolf form or in hybrid form, that's when they can spread their curse. 
I don't think anything happens if a normal humanoid, if a humanoid form werewolf bites a humanoid. I don't think anything <laughs> happens. Although it'd be kind of fun if some like fucked up version of the curse happens. That'd be kind of fun. <laughs> okay. Um, there are rules in the monster manual for a player character transformation. And I think it works really well for players that want, that come into contact with a lycanthrope and get bitten. Um, there are certain things that happen and it's all, it's all there under the lycanthropes bit in the monster manual. I think like once the next full moon hits, you're going to transform and like all your, some of your stats get like mixed up. So I think like if you're a werewolf, your strength gets instantly turned to 15 if it's not already 15 or higher. Cool. Okay. And then you're going to gain the lycanthrope block when you get transformed and it's going to be a really bad thing for you probably. Um, unless for some fucked up reason, that's what you wanted. Um, Let's talk about uh, weaknesses and resistances. Yeah, silver so, bullets. Yes. Silver. Pocket watches that you swing really, really hard. <laughs> As we've talked about in 5th edition, uh, there aren't very many weaknesses in this game. Right. I, I homebrew weaknesses for lycanthropes in my world. Silver is going to do double damage. But cool. in this, in, in vanilla D&D, the way it works is the silver just punches through the normal resistance of werewolves, which is cool. You know, okay. I, it's it's an okay way to balance it. It just doesn't feel as special to me. But basically, uh, werewolves like they resist all forms of non magical damage. Okay. Um, and except for silvered damage, so okay. silvered weapon. Right. Okay. Yeah. Cool. Um, I think the curse can actually be removed by any cleric that knows the remove curse spell. Oh, so you can just cure that I shit. I fucking hate. Yeah, that's like it's a super easy really out. Really shitty because, like, yeah, any level five cleric will be able to do it. Yeah, that's not that's not very tough to get rid of. Why do we have any fucking like it ropes? A werewolf like, shows up. Ah, oh, fuck, bro, I can help you with that. Yeah, boom, fight, boom, fight done. over. That only took one spell slot. That's right. lame. But if you're playing like a high le- high magic world and you want it like that, like, hey, that's the way it is. Like, good for you. In my world, it doesn't work like that. Remove curse is not removing fucking shit. Yeah, you're, you, you're making you, werewolves more scarce, and you're making uh, you're making the like thing that you need to fix it more difficult. Like what are you, what are you doing? About? For me, what I do is I would probably just homebrew. It's going to be some sort of crazy ritual need to be done by the priests or priestesses of a uh, or saloon. Okay. Like, and it's going to be like, you're going to need to like gather all these like rare herbs and stuff. And it's going to take like a ring of like five powerful clerics and like a willing subject. It's, I, I, like, I'm yeah. picturing Constantine right now, the opening scene where he yeah. like pulls the demon out of the girl with a mirror. Yeah. See, it's yeah. something like crazy some like that. Weird, like, crazy Shit. Because it like should be difficult. Because like if a werewolf bites you, it should be fucking scary, dude. Yeah, like, wait, you got to chain this yeah. fool up. Wait till the full, full moon. Put him on the yeah. altar, and then when the full moon is happening, and in the middle of their chains, you got to suck the demon out. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. There you go. Then you got to kill the werewolf. <laughs> okay. And there's a guy chained up. There you go. And like you're good. All right. That's how I would do it. Okay. That'd be fucking sick. I like it. I like it. And like I already kind of have a problem. Like okay, one of the things about five E that I, I really want them to improve on is. We kind of talked about this in the Bullywug episode, and we bring this up in a lot of monster episodes, is like for Bullywugs, there's only one stat block, and a Bullywug is a challenge rating one quarter thing. But like, where's my Bullywug King, like elite warrior? Where's my big burly Bullywug? Yeah, where's you, my Bullywug King? Like, you kind of have it for goblins <clears throat> a little bit. Yeah, exactly. You do have it for goblins and hobgoblins. You have it for orcs, too. Mm-hmm. Like There's a bugbear. Like, not all Bullywugs are, this, are the same. Not all of any one species is equal. Yeah. Like when it comes to like these stats and like there should be a catch all bullywug stat, but there should be the other ones. Yeah. There's no like there's a halfling like character, but there's no like midget or dwarf. Well, there's a dwarf, <laughs> right, but right, like, yeah, I mean, like human dwarfism and there's no right. like, well, there is no human dwarfism in, in D&D theoretically. Are you serious? Well, I mean, there could be. It's your world, but there's okay. no official rules for that. Well, yeah, that's what I'm saying. And like, there's no like Gaston <clears throat> where like you've just got this big ass, like super good dude. Exactly. At everything. Yeah. And and so an like also. with werewolves and all the lycanthropes, there's only one little stat block for them. And what irks me about this is like vampires ha- are way more powerful, like way more powerful in this game, especially a vampire lord. It like, sounds like shit. that. Yeah. Like there are regular vampire, uh, like I think they're called vampire spawn and they're like your regular low level vampires. Yeah. Okay. But then you have a vampire lord and we'll talk more about that in the vampire episode. Oh, well, look, look, t- I want a werewolf like fucking alpha predator. You know what I mean? Uh, like, like the, I want like the main, a, the main I want boy. the main boy. I want the dude who's leading the werewolf pack. And like I got no stats for that, so I have to homebrew it. And that's not too hard, but it's a little <laughs> annoying. And like, okay, so one of my favorite video games of all time is Castlevania: Lord of Shadows. And I like all the Castlevania games, but Lord of Shadows is a fucking amazing game. And they really like they basically threw everything away, rebooted it, and took it in a totally different direction. It for was sure. really cool. But in that game. 
there's this concept of there are three lords of shadow that have kind of like fucking conquered the land and they have their own territories and they're aligned but they're really not um and there's the lord of vampires the lord of necromancers and the lord of werewolves and even though the werewolves one is technically the weakest of the three he's still like this big badass dude and like okay i take a lot of my gothic horror um inspiration in my homebrew world from castlevania in general but also specifically that game yeah it's like and renowned so, so like, it's tested and tried and true yeah in my world there's like a black guard werewolf like lord who has his, his own big territory and his name's vladimir ebenhart and he's a fucking badass but if i want to actually throw him into one of my campaign games like I, I have to homebrew the shit out of them. Yeah, it's yeah. going to be all building yeah. from there. Exactly. But so, that's that's my only real gripe in so this So check situation. this out. Yeah. Full moon happens. You yeah. turn into a werewolf. You rage all night long. Mm-hmm. It's morning. Mm-hmm. You probably at least need a short rest. Yeah, I'm thinking the same thing. Okay, let's, let's take, take one. Rest. <laughs> Hey everybody, welcome to the part of the episode where we stop talking about the last thing we were just talking about. We talk about something else and it's you guys. Hi guys. Hello. (laughs) Hello the internet. Hey everyone. Thanks for being here. Yeah, thanks for listening. Thanks for all the support. We really appreciate it. We've been getting some really nice comments and messages lately. Warms me bones. Yeah, thank you. Thank you everyone. Um, and if you like what we're doing here at the Dungeon Cast, you can um, have more of it. Yeah, you can totally have more of it. We got even more. We got we got bonus stuff on the Bonus Dungeon Cast. Yeah. Yeah, bonus dungeon cast, and all you got to do to uh, check that out is uh, go to our Patreon, check us out. Yeah, man. Um, there's different tiers. Uh, you can join up with any of them. Yeah. And uh, by the time this episode airs, there's they're all going to be up and running pretty much, except yeah. for maybe like the higher levels, which will be up soon enough. Yeah. And I mean, and if you can't help support us on Patreon because you don't got the cash, that's okay too. We're still dishing out dungeon cast. We love doing this, so yeah. don't worry about it. All you, all you got to do is uh, spread the word. Help us out. Spread the word. We would really appreciate that if you yeah. could shout us out on Twitter, mm-hmm. um, go on to iTunes, leave a review. I think is uh, the contest still going? Or? Contest is still going. So when this episode airs, it'll be like the second week of October. So you still got four weeks or so because uh, we, we will announce our winners on the release date of Xanathar's Guide to Everything. Yeah, we don't are, sleep on this one. Yeah, we're giving away two copies of the book two um, copies. on November 21st, I think is the day it releases. And uh, yeah, to enter that, all you got to do is tweet a link to your followers with uh, to our show um, with the hashtag DungeonCast, and I'll, I'll catch that. I'll, I'll add you to the list. There's a second way that you can enter. As a matter of fact, there are not only are there two ways that you can enter, but if you do both ways you'll be entered twice so that's two times you the can chance enter to twice win. for this you can win both books no like, no you can't win both books we're not gonna do that Well, honestly i don't know if i'll be able to tell the difference because like your itunes name might not be your twitter name and uh-oh <laughs> <laughs> well, well uh, you might win chance, two books this I, so low odds. i hope that doesn't happen but anyway a lot of people are doing this so like, yeah get your name in there i mean yeah. so leave an itunes review or tweet a link to our show uh to your followers with the hashtag dungeon cast and you'll be entered to win a copy of Xanathar's Guide to Everything, which I was looking at. There's going to be something like 20 new subclasses and a bunch of like background options and all kinds of cool Hell stuff. Hell yes. yeah. Cool, cool. Yeah, Very cool. Yeah, but I think between the the core material and Volo's Guide, this is definitely the most like needed thing. Oh, yeah. yeah. And, and Skag. Like those are going to be the four books that you need. Cool. So For sure. So, and like, yeah. You know, yeah. <clears throat> so other than that, you know, thanks. Thank you everyone for listening. You guys can find us on YouTube, you know, just look the dun- look up the Dungeon Cast. You can find us on pretty much any podcast app that exists in the world. Uh the just whole world? The whole world. Even the in the internet Even parts. Even the internet parts, yes. Oh man. Um yeah, just search the Dungeon Cast. And it's of course good. we host it on SoundCloud.com slash the Dungeon Cast. And if you've got any questions or concerns or comments that you want to leave for us, you can leave it in the comment section, but you can also reach out to us on g- at gmail.com at dungeoncast.com or jun- dungeon the Dungeon, dungeon Cast at, at gmail.com. gmail.com. That's right. You're usually the one to say all these things, so I'm like tripping over my own tongue over here. <laughs> you but yeah, do it. You guys know where to find us. Yeah, come find <laughs> us. You've already found us, but like if you're yeah. uh, if you're on YouTube and you'd rather have a podcast, or if you're on a podcast and you want to see our faces, this is the information you need. So um, yeah, our Patreon, just look up the Dungeon Cast and you can find us there, and we would really appreciate it. I think we have like a dollar tier where we shout you out on the show. Yeah. That's yeah. really cool. You get access to all the show notes, you yeah. know. Just come by. Say hi. There's, we're throwing spaghetti. We're doing all kinds of all we're throwing all kinds of D&D parties there. So. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. So we'll catch you guys on the other end of this uh, this little short rest. Um, it's called the rest of the episode. See you there. <laughs> I think we'll go back to the show now. Let's so let's back go to back the to the show. Yeah.
Yes, welcome back. Werewolves. <laughs> Scary. Yes. It is it October. Be. Happy Halloween coming up. Yeah, I can't wait. I'm looking forward to it, man. Definitely. I actually have Halloween off of yes, work this year. Yes, that's so super I'm, cool. I'm pumped. We're celebrating. I wonder if the moon's going to be good. I'm going to have to look all that up pretty soon. Yeah. Yeah. Speaking of the moon. <clears throat> Speaking let's get back of to lycanthropes. the moon. So, uh, like we said, there are specific types of lycanthropes. I mean, your werewolf is going to be, everyone knows what a werewolf is, I think, at this point. Uh, they tend to be chaotic evil. They tend to align themselves with wolves in the wild. They are the most feral besides maybe the boars, which we'll get into a little bit. Um, you got any questions about the standard werewolf? Just like how often are they trying to go into like towns and villages? I'm glad you brought that up. Okay, so here's the thing. Lycanthropes a lot of times go full isolated, but not the evil ones a lot of the times. Yeah, they're going to be looking to do, uh, they what's it, are evil? master infiltrators. <laughs> master infiltrators. Because they can just be people, the right? The perfect disguise. Yeah, they can just join a community, start working, bide their time, and then when an opportunity presents itself, transform and eat a motherfucker. Yeah, do you guys ever get like a weird vibe people. off of Todd? Like he's just like, <laughs> he just like stares at my thighs yeah, all the time. And I caught him licking his lips. Yeah. Ooh, weird. Was, um, um, Todd, Todd <laughs> throwing me off. Yeah. So yeah. And then, and then next thing you know, you're in a back alley alone with Todd and he turns into a werewolf and eats your face. Yeah. Fuck Todd. So yes, uh, lycanthropes can be dangerous in that regard. Cool. Um, any other questions about werewolves? Nah. Let's talk about were rats because they're probably the second most common, if not the most common of all lycanthropes. So before we go any deeper here, okay, how big is the rat? And you how- know that's a good question. I would say okay, so there are dire rats in this in this world, oh, which shit. are probably the size of like I don't know. Um, What's like a medium sized dog? Something smaller than a Labrador. Hold on, it's still a rodent. So let's go with the capybara. Okay, yeah, I like that. Yeah, a dire rat's going to be about the size of a capybara. Which is pretty damn big. Which is huge, yeah. So, yeah, I would argue that uh, were-rats are going to turn into capybara-sized rats. (laughs) Damn. I love the capybara. I'm glad it got brought up on the podcast. This is an evil capybara. It's one of my favorite animals. So, you're turning into an evil capybara and it's... (laughs) A (laughs) were-capybara. Okay, so, so yes, I would say say that uh, were-rat can turn into that size of rat. But, I mean, I think the lore is it can just turn into a rat. So, like, Which just like a regular, like, 10-inch remember rat. Remember that it's magic, Brian, not biological. Yeah, but, like, if you're going to be a were-creature, like, <laughs> turning into a rat. Polymorph is a spell where you could turn into a fucking dragon. Like, I know, but <laughs> if you're, like, cursed to turn into a rat, like, I wish it were cooler than, like, I'm um, small and, like, oh, basically, like... Oh, I mean, like, it, it can be pretty cool because were-rats are all about... Um, uh, infiltration and spy work. They tend to run clan type communities uh, in sewer type systems underneath cities, and they run it like a thieves guild. Okay. And generally, rat, commu- rat communities, where rat communities will, in fact, be thieves guilds. Fuck, that's, that's what that's they actually do. really cool. See, and turning into a rat it can be really nice for spying on people for getting like reconnaissance done. Master Splinter is a were rat that stayed in the animal form yeah, too long. I guess he is. I guess I guess Master <laughs> Splinter is, and I guess the Ninja Turtles are were turtles. So there it is. Um, Turn qu- back to bias. <laughs> any, any um any other were rat questions? Um, th- th- that was so fucking cool, and like now my mind is racing about what else I could do with were rats. So maybe later. Yeah, were rats are, are pretty cool. They're uh they they tend to be lost. Awful evil, but I mean, I could see them being chaotic neutral. Um, again, I I'm not too into the like lycanthropes always have to be evil thing. I like the thief society, like the good the 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 Robin Hood esque thieves, like right. the the good thieves or whatever, yeah, where they yeah. just like steal because like others have too much and they have too little. Yeah, and that's you know that's cool, especially for like a player character race. Yeah. Um, let's talk were bears real quick. Because they're the most powerful of all lycanthropes because bears are more powerful than any of the other animals we've named. Fuck yeah. Because maybe tigers. Tiger versus that's a good. That's a good matchup. <coughs> Excuse me. Yes, it is. <coughs> I'm still a little sick, guys. <laughs> um, and, and I would say were tigers are probably the second most powerful of all these lycanthropes. Um, so were pair bears are very powerful. They generally like to stay to themselves. Um, they tend to be good. Uh, you've seen The Hobbit, right? Yeah. The Hobbit did a really shitty version of Bjorn, the the original werebearer. So oh, I know. yeah, they yeah. did. He was exactly. like a lot nicer. 
in the movie. Yeah, and I think that's a common. I think that's why werebears are depicted as being generally good is because since so much of D and D is based off Lord of the Rings uh, lore, and Bjorn is like the first example of a werebear I can think of, and he's a good person. God, he was such is. a cool character in the book. Dude, like, he was really cool in the book, although it had a very small part. Yeah, I, I, I didn't like the depiction in the movie. I don't like the book. And I didn't like that. God. I like that part Get of the book, of and I like I don't like that part of the movie, but I like the rest of the movie. I I love the book. Uh, I read The Hobbit probably once every three years just to read it. It's just a nice light read, and it's just a delightful fantasy novel. Um, but that's my opinion. It's okay. not the worst book I've ever read. No, or anything and like I mean that, the book was written for children, so yeah. there's that. So moving on, uh, well, any questions about were bears? Nah. <laughs> okay, were boars? They are ill-tempered. They are cruel. They are very vulgar, dirty. They're pigs. They're pigmen. Right. I mean, um, they do live in family units, usually deep in forests. Um, as much as they love to spread their curse, they also don't like to be around people. Okay. And I think they probably spend most of their time in hybrid or animal form. So they are just basically like hunters. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I, I would say so. Um, they're just mean, nasty motherfuckers. And boars in real life, boars are mean motherfucking animals and very deadly. Territorial bullies. Yeah, yeah they, they don't fuck around. Don't fuck around with boar. Boar killed King Robert in Game of Thrones. That was season one, man. They're, that's not spoilers. I don't give a fuck. All right. <laughs> <laughs> okay, moving on. Where tiger? <laughs> Where is the tiger? Uh, Where tigers usually spend their time uh, in jungles. Okay. Uh, they are very isolated as well, and they probably spend most of their time. They kind of they probably spend an even amount of time between all three forms. Okay. Cool. They really embrace their feral nature, and they're all about the hunt. Uh, nice. They like to hunt with bows and 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 weaponry, but they also like to hunt in tiger form. Um, this is a big part of why were tigers don't like to spread their curse because they don't like to vie for territory with yeah. other were tigers. It's hard enough to catch yeah. like an ostrich. Yeah, which kind of begs an ostrich. Ostriches don't live in the jungle. What? Well, I mean, like tigers don't just live in the jungle. <laughs> I guess emus emus live in the jungle. Well, were tigers live in the jungle according to the lore, Brian? Okay, I suppose sure. they could live in the savanna though. Too. Yeah, that's what I was. I just went straight there. <laughs> yeah, Sorry. Uh, yeah, just ostriches. <laughs> um. So, which kind of begs the question of, like, fast. how do were-tigers spread at all if they don't like spreading their curse? And I kind of like the idea of, like, well, when a were-tiger begins to, like, show their age, maybe they do get, like, this kind of, like, biological ticking clock thing where it's like, oh, well, I need a, you know. I need like, a successor. I need a, a successor, yeah. There has exactly. to be at least one. So, that that would be my, my that would be my explanation for that. Any questions about the were-tiger? They I look mean, cool as fuck. Yeah, it sounds yeah. like they look cool. Like um, I think they tend to be generally neutral. What's that new Pokemon starter? The, oh, but the I don't cat. want to talk about Lucha Litten. Uh, what's his name? His name is Incineroar. Incineroar, yeah. That, it looks the like, shittiest of new Pokemon starters. I'm, pictu- I'm picturing... Fight me. <laughs> <laughs> I'm picturing that. This is you wait till like, I die. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> I'm picturing that, but like colored like, you know, with the, the orange. Yeah, and, I would say... Yeah, I would say Incineroar is a wear tiger. <laughs> so fucking stupid. Just super buff and like a tiny um, little waist. Here's a fun fact. I should have brought this up at the beginning of the episode. So all humanoids can be affected by lycanthropy. And so can giants. What? Can you fucking imagine like uh, a were giant. What, what's like, the name of the Super Saiyan form where they go full giant monkey? Oh, the, it's just a giant ape, I think. Okay, well, a giant ape-sized werewolf. Can you <laughs> fucking imagine? Like, that's that's a fucking major campaign arc. That's gross. It's, there's just this massive nude werewolf monster <laughs> stalking the land. It's a giant chilling. The, the full size moon of ha- the fucking building. It doesn't building. know it's been bitten. It's like something yeah. came by and bit it, and then the full moon comes out. It's like, no, <laughs> oh shit! <laughs> it just terrorizes the countryside. Everyone. Oh, like, that's, why? <laughs> why is this happening? What is this? So yeah, that's a thing that could happen. I've never seen that in a campaign, but by God, someone well, please do that. You're tempting me. Yeah, oh, please, please do. I'd love to uh, fucking deal with that situation. So okay, let's you what? let's move on. Well, I mean, I out that, of character, yeah, yeah. in character, I would hate it. Um, so let's move on. Holy um, shit! A lot of times, I see people wanting to play a werewolf. Unfortunately, like the way the monster manual presents it, isn't a really good way. Or a player character race to play their game. Not at least personally, not my opinion. I think a lot of people agree. It's why you see so much homebrew of lycanthropy PC races. That seems like causality um, for that, for sure. Yeah, I mean, werewolves are fucking cool. Vampires are cool. I mean, look at how popular they are in pop culture. Of course, there's gonna be plenty of people that want to play one. Fuck, I homebrewed a uh, werewolf blackguard. Not only as an NPC, but I played that NPC in an evil campaign that uh, back in my early D and D games, and it was a lot of fun. Um, Unfortunately, a lot of homebrew I see when it comes to making like a werewolf race tends to be overpowered. Um, and I kind of understand where that comes from because, you know, werewolves are powerful. And if you're going to play a werewolf, you want all this cool werewolf shit, right? Yeah. 
Um, werewolves, uh, lycanthropy can fit a little bit more as a class if you want to really homebrew that up, but that's difficult and I wouldn't recommend it, but I've seen people try and I've seen some pretty cool things out there. Um, I ended up, uh, trying my own hand at a werewolf race and I only spent about 10 minutes and I feel like it's balanced, but I want to talk about it. I also want to talk about other things you could do to just kind of like shortcut your way there. So one of the things you can do is of course use the monster manual and just use that. That's fine. I suppose it's boring. And I guess you would just maintain all like you would be a human and have all that stuff, which isn't much because your humans don't get much of anything. And then this little bit of bonus, like strength stuff. Okay. And like some bonus hybrid attacks and stuff like that. That's a little boring. You could use the shifter race in the Eberron Unearthed Arcana because they are supposed to be descendants of lycanthropes. So oh, they wow, have cool. a little bit of shifty powers, but they're really underwhelming. Um, Sounds and like a tiefling kind of. Kind of. Like if you compare it to a devil. It, it's an Eberron thing, which okay. we'll talk about when we do an Eberron episode. Um, so you could do that and it would work probably perfectly. It's not what I would do, though. So here, here's, here was my take on a werewolf. I spent 10 minutes. You're going to plus two to strength, plus one to dexterity. Uh, I came up with a feature I called Hunter Instincts, where you're going to get proficiency in perception and advantage on all perception checks that have to do with smelling something, like trying to track something. Right, sure. Um, dark vision, because, you know, everything gets dark vision. Why wouldn't a werewolf have it? Yeah. Silver vulnerability. So I'm gonna you're going to be vulnerable to silver. Cool. Uh, I don't think that's too... Um, is that in all, the t- all the time? Like All the time. Okay, yeah. so even I, as a human. I, I don't find that too inhibiting just because, like, how often is silver going to come up? Yeah. Except for motherfuckers that know you're a werewolf, and then they're going to use that. Yeah, and, and like, then you're going to probably... That's, that might be something you have to deal with. Yeah, and then after that, I would give them an at-will ability of shapeshifter, where they can turn into a wolf with a... Mul- I'll, you'll use the wolf monster template, but you'll maintain your HP and ability scores, and you'll add your proficiency bonus to all your stuff. And so, for mentality-wise, like, roleplay-wise, are you... Um, making them like is it up to the player to like resist this how we were talking about earlier I like- would imagine that if you're playing the wolf as an actual race um, it shouldn't be something you're resisting you've you've learned to live with it yeah this is like your culture like you've yes. adapted it okay if, on that? You're, if you're playing the race that's struggling with it then I would ignore this and just go with the monster manual thing and because that's perfect for like you when you're in normal form you're you're an elf but like when the full moon comes, you get transformed into this fucking monster that can't control itself. OK. Like so there's no reason you want to treat that as a PC race, in my opinion. OK. Uh, and then also you would get uh, the hybrid claw and bite attack. You would maintain your humanoid stats, but gain this hybrid claw and bite attack, which you could use if you don't want to use your weapons. Right. Yeah. yeah OK. And that's kind of like the trouble of being a lycanthrope is a PC race because like you want to do all this cool werewolf stuff, but it's going to be outstripped by your class shit. So it's like, you, you're going to really want to role play it. You're not, you shouldn't be getting stuff that's like overpowering your class. Cause then that's overpowering. That's an overpowerful race. Right. So it's kind of like this tit for tat kind of thing. You can you it's, it's like a useful ability. Like if you get disarmed, yeah, that's great. Yeah. Or like talk, you need to talk to some animals or whatever. Yeah, absolutely. Like yeah. There's, you can find some wolves that are nearby. I did want to bring up on that note. Like there is a really cool, um, like lycanthrope society in a game called golden sun lost age. Oh, okay. So everything's flavored in that game with like, like everybody's tied to an element and this is like a, an air kind of thing Okay, where you, you have like this freedom to, change like into this uh this were creature but you're really not that much different you get you have like these um psionic abilities that are tied to the elements like you use powers to and only other people with the abilities can see you do it in battle but you can summon like a tornado or lightning bolts or like really cool like wind or thunder storm like stormy types of abilities and these people in the full moon they change into this animal like this were creature, like in this in this uh, town, they're called Garo, mm-hmm. um, and they change into wolves and they like wear cloaks and they hide from society because they're just like normal people, but right. they change into wolves and like they are wolf esque. They're like anim- yeah. more animal. They have like their own language, mm-hmm. and they're um, they're also psychic because like wind powers in that game are like mental. Like you can read people's minds or you oh. can like see the unseen that's like reveal stuff that's yeah. an interesting take okay yeah that's a really cool if you're looking for inspiration for role play i feel like those npcs in that game are done really really well if, yeah. if you want to yeah. if you want to look for something like that it's the second golden sun game lost age also a really really great game cool 
Sounds that's good. Two video games we've, we've touched on. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> um, it, it, if that's it, I think we're done. Do you have any questions about lycanthropy, Brian? Mm, no. All right. It's just I like think the weirdest fetish. <laughs> yeah, I suppose I suppose it would be. No hate, it's just weird to me. <laughs> um, well, with that being said, <laughs> let's call this a game. Let's call it a game. All right, we'll talk to you later.